instructions now. The referee Tony Perez. If you score a knockdown, you must go to the farthest neutral corner and stay there until I tell you to come out. Three knockdowns in any same round, if th that means the fight is over, okay? Now 40 seconds. The bear would not save anybody from being knocked out. The count must continue, all right? Any questions? Shake hands and good luck to both of you. Now, Ron Lyle put him down twice, and he got back up. Uh, was that perhaps the turning point in uh, this guy's career, do you think? Well, he showed a lot of people that he had the guts to get back up after being knocked down and then stood on his head. All right, round one of what's supposed to be ten rounds, Jerry Quarry, and most people think it won't go about three or four. Lado, with his back to your camera, right here, our camera, I should say. George Foreman, very tentative to start out with. Well, he's... Maybe he's trying to give the people a little action tonight, maybe go a few rounds. But I doubt that very seriously. George does not like to fight any lengthy time in his fight. Foreman is 6'3", 27 years of age. Ledeau is 27, about six foot one and a half. He comes forward, which might not be the way to fight George Foreman. Look at Foreman as the ballet man. I, I disagree with you, really, Tom. I think the best way to fight Foreman is coming forward, but moving side to side as you're doing it, staying inside the reach and inside the punching power of George Foreman. Foreman has the good heavy jab. It's very stiff, isn't it? It's, uh, it's like a sledgehammer. So the thing to do is to move inside, stay inside that power. His last fight, a five-round knockout of Joe Frazier. All right, hold Okay, Scott Ledoux is the fighting Frenchman from Minneapolis, 18 wins, 11 of those by knockouts, misses with a wild left. I would not be surprised at all, Tom, to see Scott Ledoux hurt from that left jab of George Foreman. It's a heavy jab, and as we said, even though both men has 78 inches in reach, Foreman is much, much larger than Scott Ledoux. I mean, he's, as I said, he's an awesome-looking heavyweight. He's an extremely powerful man. I worked with him in the gym, and he was the strongest Ooh. man I ever worked with. This is with the left hook, but sort of shoves Ledeau around. Scott Ledeau will not back off, and Dwayne Bobbick, even though he defeated him, did not knock him out, which might have surprised some people. In fact, he never, knocked, he never even knocked him down, Tommy, but uh, if he stands up for 10 rounds with George Foreman, he will surprise the heck out of him. That's Tony Perez, one of the very fine officials in all of boxing from New York City. An extremely well-refined referee. He knows his business, and he handles himself beautifully in the ring. Watch the right hand of Scott Ledeau. I always thought he carried it a little bit low. Makes a good jab. Ooh, it lands the left hook. I, I, I really don't think he can hurt Foreman. Foreman takes a good shot uh, and comes back from a good shot as he proved in the fight with Ron Lyle. Round number one of what's supposed to be 10, Jerry. It's not a laughing matter inside where they are. The ring is 20 feet inside measurements. Right, right, right at this moment, I wouldn't want to be in this place. Ledeau with two or three... Shots of a combination. Takes two good jabs and almost buckled his legs on the jab. And Ledoux landed a good jab. Got hit a slight hook there that uh, shook his head a little bit. George Foreman, you were talking to him last night. Okay, there's the end of round one. The big man uh, not looking uh, with avarice at his opponent and didn't try to take him out. Here's some of the action. Get ready for round number two. Foreman and Ledoux, the big French, French Canadian, really from northern Minnesota. He used to fool around with some of the football players from the Vikings, but that won't help him right now, Jerry, will he? No, he's not in there with a football player today. He's in there with right, one of the strongest fighters in the history of the heavyweight division. Not sure Foreman wouldn't be a pretty good linebacker. Well, uh, he might compare with Dick Butchers, maybe. What kind of a defensive fighter is George Foreman? Has anybody well, been able to find out? His awesome strength is really his defense. He holds people off of them. He moves them around and with that strength. And uh, he's just a, a very capable, not maybe uh, one of the most gifted boxers in the business, but definitely one of the most gifted strength fighters in the business. All right, watch that stiff left jab by George Foreman at 6'3", 229. When he pops you on the end of it, the head snaps back. It's whiplash. Watch this one. Yeah, it, it definitely hurts. There's no question about that. A good jab by Ledoux. Ledoux with a good jab. Well, it's Ledoux's oh, tactic Step back, please. for him to, uh, or at least he stated what he was going to do, was try to box around, move around, and, and try to land five rounds, see if he can tire Foreman out uh, in the, the same fashion as Muhammad Ali did. But then Scott Ledoux is not Muhammad Ali. <laughs> so we're talking a different.
from Balgu. Look at that jab. That's the one we were talking about. A light right hand against a retreating foreman by Ledoux. But boy, that, that jab by Foreman is frightening. I think that right hand got uh, Foreman's attention, and he kind of maybe ticked him off a little bit. I tell you, Scott Ledoux loves to be on CBS television. It's just a heck of a way to prove a point against this man. That's right. Out number two. Heavyweights, and I'm talking about heavy heavyweights. There's that jab, 223 on the left, 229 on the right. And a former champion who wants it badly and seems to have himself straight down. Oh! Oh, yeah. Shot missed by Foreman, but Ledoux landed a decent right hand in the middle of it. A good right hand by Ledoux. Ledoux comes in and then ties up George Foreman. You know, a crowd always seems to root for the underdog. And, and Ledoux, oh. he came to fight. He wants to get in here and show George Sloan I'm not afraid of you. Foreman looking to Clancy in his corner. You know Clancy pretty well, don't you? He's well, funny. he's uh, one of the better boxing trainers and teachers. And uh, he can handle himself. He knows how to teach people. Oh, 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 oh. 26 seconds left. A push down by George Foreman. Tom, I really think that Ledoux said, hey, I'm not going to be intimidated by his power. If he uses it, I'm just going to go along with it. Uh, and he went on down somewhere. rather than try to fight the strength. All right, good idea. Eight seconds left. Jerry Corey knows he's been with the greatest heavyweights in the world. Missing the left hand and right hand. Foreman chased him into the neutral corner. An uppercut, and they're fighting at the bell, and Ledoux threw the last one. End of round two, former University of Minnesota football player who's in with, I think, uh, the biggest, toughest, the hardest hitter in the heavyweight division. But he doesn't look like he's been hurt so far. Oh, not at all. He's, uh, he's gone out there and said, hey, Foreman, prove to me you're one of the hardest punches. Prove to me you're the strongest man. I don't think you're that good. I'm glad he's having it proven to him and not to me. Here's the big fella, Foreman, <laughs> off it right above our camera. The man in the red with the white stripe is George Foreman. Awesome. Extremely surprised right now that we're going into the third round, Tommy. Pretty I good. thought maybe Foreman wants to get a little worse. Maybe he needs it. Scott Ledoux, a pretty good hooker. Now moving inside, as you recommended, Jerry, is the safe way to fight the big man. The only way to fight him, but don't do it straight in. Go, go side to side. Move him that way. A little blood from the right nostril of George Foreman. And his uppercut looks like he could really rip you if he lands that thing straight up, huh? The surprising thing is that it. It's a funny looking uppercut. It doesn't come from the way uppercuts are supposed to be thrown. It comes from a wide punching stance. And he gets here with a strong left jab by Ledoux. Exact thing to do. Punch and follow your punch. Go in and get inside. Left jab bothered Ledoux there, as I said earlier. Oh. Staggered Ledoux with, I think, a missed punch on the back of the head almost did the job. Oh, that was awesome. Shots in the back of the head can be... He's hurt now. And Foreman moves yeah. around very well for a big man side to side. And he's waving him in, saying, no, he didn't bother me. I can't believe that, Tom. 46 seconds left in round number three. And Scott Ledoux is certainly a fighting Frenchman in the George Foreman. Utica, this crowd of 6,000 is going wild. They didn't expect to see this either. Not at all. Foreman's nose a little bloody on both sides, but he is extremely strong. Look at this. Well, we know by reputation, Scott Ledoux is a talker and says, hey, Prove it to me. I'm not going to be intimidated by words and, and by press buttons. I'm going to be intimidated by the power of your punch, and that's all. George Foreman is landing a lot of leather, and Scott Ledoux is holding on. You can see how much left in round three. How much is left in Scott Ledoux? That's the big question. Good jab by Foreman. Two good jabs by Foreman. He still appears to me to be in complete control of his faculties. Incredibly in control. Maybe he will trying to tire out uh, George Foreman. George Foreman, an overhand right, and Foreman now is muggy. The young man from Minneapolis St. Paul. Right up on a low right hand by Ledoux. Out of nowhere by Ledoux. And Ledoux has it backed off at 223, even though he couldn't shake it. Round three. I see a little blood on the bridge of the nose of Scott Ledoux. I don't know whether it's a gut or coming from his nose or Foreman's nose. Foreman now beginning to stop Ledoux, but Ledoux keeps coming back and throwing a big punch just in time to drive him off. Oh, three big lefts, four big lefts. And he shakes his head at Foreman again. Ledoux's still shaking his head. You're not hurting me. I don't believe that. 13, 13 seconds left in round three. Many thought it would be over by now. There are 10 seconds left. I thought it would be over by now. There's no question that Ledoux is oh. showing he's a gutty man. Big He's going to get up. The bell will probably save Scott Ledoux. He is cut along the left side of the face. He's trying to get up right here. It's all over. The bell almost saved him, but it's over at the end of round three. Ledoux wants some more. And Foreman looks 
like he's relaxing. former heavyweight champion, George Foreman, a, a knockout in the closing seconds. Yeah, would you bring over George, please? Scott Ledoux, uh, the man from uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul, is some kind of a tough guy. Stuck it right out there and kept it there. And uh, I think George Foreman is probably surprised and perhaps happy about it all. Because I do think he wanted a fantastic workout, if that can be what it was called. And he got that because Ledoux never backed off. All right, George Foreman will be over here in just a second. And uh, Pat, uh, I've seen some good fight crowds, but Utica, New York really has their share of people that have come to see action and really appreciate it. This was, all right, 2.58 of that third round was the knockout. That's officially. Don King is over, and Foreman is having the gloves taken off there now. There's this. Congratulations, my man. Did he, did he, George, did he give you perhaps more of a test than you thought, or was it good for you to get this kind of a guy that stood there and just stayed up there? Oh, uh, he, he had a little more to get up about himself than I had imagined. He was extremely tough. I haven't yet hit him with one wild shot. It was the short punches that eventually made it all happen, and he was extremely courageous. I thought he had your nose bleeding just a bit in the second round. Is that wrong, or was that just the first round he did? Yeah, so somebody, somehow he got his courage up, and he got tougher and tougher. Well, I think and when I you heard, heard him, he was huh? tough, but he was slicking back, counterpunching more or less. So I think he fooled me that time. I thought he was supposed to be real coming at me, and then he tricked me and countered my jab and really came into the body. So the man was uh, undoubtedly a good fighter, and he should be around and make a name for himself in the future. Yeah, George, I thought it was, uh, Corey said it was smart to jab and follow it in and tie you up, which is what he did, huh? I had no choice myself but to do a lot of jabbing because the guy was tough. But now I'm back on the activity road. I want to become champion of the world. I want to fight everybody. I'd like to thank Joe Frazier for allowing me the opportunity to fight a top contender along with Ronnie Lyles. And that keeps my name on the top contention sheet, sleep and I, uh, sheet, and I want to stay active. I'll fight anybody. How come I want to fight the champion of the world, but it's hard to get up Do you care sometimes. who that is? Do you care? It doesn't matter right now. I just want the opportunity, and if the opportunity presents itself, I'll take advantage of it, uh, I'm George, sure. now listen, I'm not going to get uh, out of bounds with you, but I want to ask. Uh, something happened yesterday to sort of bother your concentration, some kind of a legal thing, which I don't know anything about, so I'm not going to ask you about it. Do you feel that you have a personal life as a, as a fighter that, that darn it is your own business and people should mind their own business? Yeah, I think the less people know about an athlete, the less personally they know about him, the better. I train hard, I work hard, and I haven't broken any law. So I don't think I have, if I break a law, I got to answer to the public. But if it's something personal, I'll stick, stick it between George Foreman and himself and whoever he's uh, associated with. I'd like to say hello to my doctor, Anderson in Marshall, Texas, and all my great pastors down in the church in Marshall, and send them my love. All right, let's, let's look at the replay now. We've got it right here, George. Uh, again, now you're moving after Scott, and you've got him in trouble now. Yeah. Right now, I'm just laying in a little low. Got my hands a little low because he is shorter, and I want to get low in order to land a good uh, uppercut. Now this man is, a clean, is extremely clever because hit you with the right hand, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's clever. So the short punches are what does it. Boy, There's those no are difference. short and strong. I heard if you, George Foreman, are straight with your punches, that you can knock a building down. Uh, I don't know about that. But, but that's right the way now, you like to fight, huh? Yeah, I got Charles Shipe, Gil Ooh. Clancy, and all my men here, and they got me working on power. And plus, I take my time now. If a guy get up against the ropes, I go outside and wait. This, the fight is supposed, supposed to take, point, take place between two fighters. I'm not supposed to carry the whole fight. This guy makes a payday at fighting. He's supposed to fight some too. Sure. And uh, it makes it kind of hard when you fight an underdog because whatever he does, the crowd kind of go along with I it. Gotcha. And you're so the big guy. You know, you might, yeah. you're used to that, though. Yeah, but this guy is known to knock big ones out. All right. Now you beat Ron Lyle, Joe Frazier, a guy that I personally think is one of, you know, one of my close friends. Yeah. He respects you a lot. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do the rest of this year? You just go up and watch Norton and Ali and no, just take the. Make I like to fight again within a month's time. It doesn't matter who. I couldn't fight Kenny Norton because you know I knocked Norton out in two rounds. 
and his people say no way they want him to fight me again. And Mohammed, I don't know why he's been dodging George Foreman for two years now. For some reason, he's fought everybody but me. He fought only the guys I've knocked out. Yeah. Now I'm waiting right now for the championship of the world to present itself. Honestly, I can take advantage of it. I work extremely hard and I fight all the time. It doesn't matter who, no matter what they say about a fighter. The last time I over underrated one was in Africa and Muhammad Ali won the fight. There's no shortcut, but I want to tell you something. You have carried yourself with respect from the very first moment you came on this scene, and nobody can ever fault you for that. And the men that you, the men that you have fought, fought and beaten, respect you very much, and that's a heck of a thing to say about a person. Good luck to you. Yeah, the men are very nice to me. Yeah, Thank you're, you. you're quite a guy. And by the way, I've known the football players that weigh 250. They aren't as big as you at 225. That's Jerry Query. You that's know, the, the, great, the great Floyd Patterson was here, so I'm moving on up in the big time. You're having some fun. Thank <laughs> you very much, all right? All right, there he is, the former heavyweight champion of the world who thinks he can get it back if somebody would give him a shot.